Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, your boy is finally back in London. I know South Africa was great. If you guys haven't seen, had a lovely trip there, please make sure you go check it out. Um, we also stopped in Dubai as well. But yeah, make sure you go and check out all of those videos. If you like them, please like, subscribe and comment. But today, as you can see, your boy is back in the ends and your boy has got the beautiful Range Rover Sport SVR behind him. Um, let's just have a quick update. Alloys on this car are terrible, man. Need to get some new alloys and stuff like that. Car's not dirty, but it's not clean. Um, and the suspension is obviously sitting on low at the moment. Um, just nice and clean, nice and clean, man. So today we're just gonna jump in. Um, it's gonna be more of a talking video to be fair. I'm gonna talk to you guys about my ownership journey of this vehicle. Um, because as many of you have probably known, if you followed, this has been my favorite car from when I was a kid and this has probably been one of the only cars I've ever wanted to have as a kid. Um, not saying I'm not into supercars, not saying I don't like the Ferraris, Lambos, etc. Of course I do, but you know, every kid has that one car that they're saying, cool, this is what I'm gonna work to for the next five, 10 years. This was that car for me. And now that it's here, let's have that conversation about, you know, um, is it living up to that expectation or is it better to just have as a postal car? So guys, um, I hope you find today's video interesting. Obviously this car is still beautiful no matter what. Um, but yeah, stay tuned and like, subscribe and comment. So I think it only makes sense right to do a engine start. There's some people walking by and this car is extremely loud. So this car sounds absolutely crazy. Just to remind you guys, it's got the Quicksilver exhaust. So that's why it's super loud. Uh, listen to this. No, didn't work. And I'll tell you why. Because I've got a ghost in the car. Um, and I didn't insert the code. So let's just do that quick. Okay, the ghost should be done now. Let's try, let's try. Sometimes this happens though, man. All right, cool, I'm gonna have to get out, lock the car. See, this is, this is, we're gonna come onto this because this is a perfect example of what I mean when I talk about the Range Rovers. And I generally have to do this. This isn't even me just doing this for filming purposes. Like, this is sometimes just the Range Rovers, man. Okay, let's insert this ghost. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's see, let's see. Didn't work. And I've done the ghost right. Like, I think you don't think I'm overreacting. Like, cool. Look, I'm gonna take you through this whole process of just starting this car. I have to lock the car again. Let's just leave it for a second, go for a walk. Boom, 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 boom. So the, the car's brain just resets because that must be the only issue now. Then I'm not even gonna unlock it. I'm just gonna use the keyless. I'm gonna go like so. And I'm gonna do the ghost straight away. Boom. I know why the car's not starting. <laughs> okay, cool. This is actually my fault. This is actually my fault. <laughs> this is my fault. Okay, I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna look like such a numpty. But this is actually my fault. I, this ain't Range Rover. I'll take this one on the chin. But this sort of stuff does happen. But as you can see here, um, we've got the MetaTrack immobilizer on. Like so, which basically, as you can see, at least at least it works, right? So it stops people from starting the car. Um, I always turn the immobilizer on, even if I'm just stopping for five minutes. And I'll explain why I do that in a second as well. Um, some of the experiences, should we say, with this car haven't been the best. But now this will work. Listen to this, guys. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. an absolute beast of a noise and I'm hoping that you guys can hear it um, because that's extremely loud extremely extremely loud so if you give it like five minutes you'll hear the engine will probably start to lower the revs it's 
So you can see now, this is a lot, a lot more manageable. So first thing, let's just start with that exhaust. Where I park at night is not too far from neighbors. Let's just pull it like that, yeah? This car is not nice for anybody's neighbors, nobody. Um, the Quicksilver exhaust, basically, there's a back box, I think that's what it's called, which is somewhere near the back of the car. Um, and what that is, is like a switch, basically, that leaves the valves open for that Quicksilver exhaust on start. So no matter when or how or whatever, that car is going to always start loud, um, loud, always, always. Now, it's, it's very cool. That sort of stuff is cool when you're, again, when you're like dreaming, you're aspiring, you're thinking, yeah, if I had a car and it starts like that, that would be sick. Do you get what I'm saying? When you get it, and every morning that is what you hear, it becomes a bit mad still. It, it, it becomes borderline fucking selfish for yourself um, because your neighbors are going to hate you so much. It's so, so, so loud. The floor vibrates. And remember, it's also in a confined space as well. So it's just bouncing off the walls and it's just vibrating. It's way too loud. It's not really manageable, to be honest with you. Oof, we're in the range now. I'm, I'm also, just to put it in perspective for you lot, I'm only going to drive until I told you I'm only going to drive with the exhaust valves closed just so you guys can get a sense of just just exactly how loud this car is. Ridiculous. I have to do this this is the sort of stuff basically you may not see it but the range is effectively it's not delivering full power just I could just feel it just then I could definitely feel that now this will be full power like you will hear this now that people I don't think you'd ever hear me say something is too loud but that I'd consider to be too loud like that is I remember I told you I'm not even gonna turn on the exhaust that's what I said I'm not even gonna turn on the exhaust until I tell you that was crazy and the truth of the matter is the exhaust still makes a massive difference as well like it actually does but Let's go on to today's video, which is talking about this car, hey? The Range Rover SVR, five litre V8, supercharged, Jaguar and Land Rover produced, um, English car, I mean, four by four, not to 60 in under five seconds. What's that, 510 brake horsepower, um, probably 570, close to that, newton meters of torque. And of course, an exhaust as well. The car speaks for itself. And I don't really need to talk about this car too much and the tech specs and just all that stuff because, again, I've got so many videos of this specific car on my channel. So, guys, if you haven't already, please go and check out those videos. Today's video is more going to talk about the ownership and. The truth of the matter is, as much as I love the, 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 the SVR, I really also hate this car. Like, I really do. I love it for this one. But that is absolutely beautiful. And that is the reason you buy an SVR. Do you know what I mean? Um, the way it puts power down, it does it like no other car. It's got we don't talk about it much, we talk about obviously Audi's Quattro and Mercedes 4 Matic and BMW's X Drive but we never really had anybody talk about just how good Land Rover well, are, maybe you do, but um, are at their four wheel drive system. I'd argue they're one of the best and the way that this car puts down power um, is like no other. 
I, do, I love the car because I don't feel like there's any other car in the UK that, uh, in the UK especially, remember that word, that statement, in the UK. I don't think there is any other car that will be as fun on English roads. Can't think of one, honestly. Um, and we're talking about speed humps, potentially potholes on certain roads and just, the suspension takes it with ease. The sound provides, it's, it's orgasmic sound. It provides you with so much fun. Um, and it just it just thrills you. So, from that perspective, this car, honestly, man, you can't you can't knock this car at all. Um, now, from a practicality perspective, also, the car again is superb. You can fit four four proper humans in this car, big size six foot humans if you want to. I've given you a few lovely, lovely reasons as to why I love this car. Now, let me tell you why I hate it. I think everybody knows right that Land Rover are not the most reliable cars um, and I think we all hear this on social media or on YouTube and all of these other places even research blogs whatever you can you can probably look it up and people will tell you that Land Rover is not the most reliable car only when you then own a Land Rover do you realize just how unreliable the car is um, and yeah this car has been a curse and it's also been a blessing been a blessing because it has generally been so much fun to experience and to drive it has been a curse because every mile on this car has cost me a fortune and a fortune like no other car that i've ever experienced in my whole entire life of owning vehicles uh, this car is extremely expensive to maintain and i'm talking about now things going wrong with the car um, general maintenance is still fucking expensive uh, insurance off the charts ridiculously priced and the reason for that is the cars keep getting stolen that leads me on to story time number one this car has been stolen twice and thank the lord for trackers because if not i wouldn't have this car back the first time the car got stolen um i've, I've got cctv for both instances they was in within 30 seconds um and the car was off running by about 30 uh, by about three minutes it was just, it was just, yeah after three minutes the car was gone the second time the car was also stolen i'm going to tell you how i got lucky in the second time the people that actually robbed the car they actually stripped the whole car they cut all of the wires in the car and they actually cut the tracker which actually disabled the tracker and, and whatnot stripped it all of that stuff so how did you find the car they asked well something called an apple air tag in my cars i also have apple air tags alongside trackers um, and these air tags are in places which are i'd argue once they're being put where they've been put they're almost impossible to be removed almost impossible and when people get in the car if they've got an iphone they'll say oh apple air tag in this car boom, 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 all that sort of stuff um, so people know um, and i assume the robbers knew as well but they stripped it, they stripped the tracker the second time, um, car was gone, but then remembered Apple AirTag, sent the location to the police, the police went and found the car. I personally think they parked the car up for two reasons, either to see if somebody would come and collect it, um, if not by the following day they'd probably try to take it somewhere and do something with it, or number two, because they clocked there was an AirTag in the car, but they also couldn't find it, so they said this, we're going to leave the car. So those are my two thoughts, but leads to our first crazy expense. Something that money can't buy, peace of mind. Um, it's very hard to go sleep sometimes at night with having a car like this on the road. Um, it, it's very, very hard just parked outside without it being blocked in or whatever the case may be. Uh, even when you're out in Central or in Clapham or just in certain different areas, when you're just out and about in and around London, and you just park this car up and you say cool i'm gonna go for five minutes and then come back your heart can still start beating so again to put it into perspective this the second time this car was stolen i was going into a calf i went into a calf i ordered my food in the calf i came outside of the calf and by the time i went in ordered i didn't even eat in the calf i ordered came back out car was gone disappeared that's that just to put it in perspective how quick it was i even parked in front of the calf and i didn't even hear that exhaust let's talk about reliability I had warranty on this car 
as majority of you know, the car was purchased with warranty. Um, unfortunately, due to bad mismanagement for myself, uh, the warranty date came, it passed, and I didn't manage to get warranty added onto the car. Now guys, do not do that. Do, don't make that same mistake that I've made. If I had called them before the warranty ended, they would have just had the warranty kept rolling. A month after, I realized, said, oh snap, let me call warranty, boom, 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 called them, told them, yep, yeah, need to get warranty added. They said, no problem, bring it down, we'll look around the car, go from there, no problem. Now, they gave me a date of about two weeks time. Now guys, I kid you not, God strike me down if I'm lying. In that time period, the whole engine broke. Damn. I'm sorry. I mean, I say broke, I mean it broke, broke. It wasn't like it was just, oh, let's just, no, it broke, broke. So, well, basically the engine was misfiring. When the engine was misfiring, one of the pistons actually flew up and hit the shell of the engine super, super hard. It cracked the shell of the engine. And as a result of that, all of the oil within the engine completely leaked out, every single part of it. What can you say to that? What can you say to that? Now, that would have most definitely been covered under warranty if I still had warranty with Land Rover, but I didn't. Um, and as a result, that had to be covered by myself. Now, I'm not gonna go into the numbers specifically, but we're talking well into the five figure region. Well onto that. And what we needed to do was we needed to actually replace the engine. So actually had to go out source a brand new engine from Land Rover and put that engine into this car with lower miles and everything while the engine was misfiring um, it was causing the catalytic converters to basically get blocked up with fumes so on top of their whole new engine needing to be replaced catalytic converters also needed to be replaced um, and again, that was well into the four figures just for that part alone as well. These things we're talking about, just the parts, we're not even talking about the labor at this stage. So, you know, when we're talking about that, we're talking, you know, a lot of money, a lot of money on this car for it still to be here today, for it to be moving the way it's moving. Um, and, you know, that is, it's been tough. It's been tough. And that's why I say I, do, I hate the car because it's been a period of over three months, I would say. Um, it's been a period of over three months that the car's not been driving properly um, in terms of getting the engine, then getting the catalytic converters. I'm paying for this car monthly, as most of you know, I get most of my cars on finance, uh, or all of my cars on finance. Um, so we're paying for the car monthly, and the car is off the road for at least three months, gathering dust, not gathering dust per se, but being worked on consistently plus taking money out of your pocket. You know, those situations there kind of made me think to myself, you know, you really, and it's just more of a life thing to be honest, nothing to do specifically with cars or this car specifically, but it's probably more of a life thing. It's kind of showed me you do have to really be careful with what you wish for, that what you wish for. Because I, as I mentioned, this was what I really wanted, what I wished for, um, this car. And you know, we have the C43, as you guys know on the channel, that's still there. It may be going by the way, but stay tuned for that. Uh, we've got the BMW X Rom as well. Um, and there's a load of other cars around the place as well, scattered around uh, with uh, via Swift solutions that we get access to. Um, but this was the main one that I wanted. And of all of the cars, this is the one that's caused me the most pain and the most financial loss. Overall, for like the last six or 12 months, I'm gonna tell you exactly how long I've had this car. I've had this car since November I purchased this car last year. So that's just over six months. I don't know how long exactly, but six, seven months, uh, depending on when, it, let's see when this video comes out. leave you with that is what i leave you with um guys if you enjoyed this video you know what to do uh hit that like button hit that subscribe button uh drop some comments down below let's keep the engagement flowing and going um and yeah peace out take it easy